Ben, Alberto, uh, Peter, it's a uh, buenas tardes. It's just a pleasure to have all of you here. It's a great conference uh, going on. Did you did you have time to make some tour and activity today? Maybe yesterday? No. Not this uh, yeah. <laughs> I did not have time on this trip, but um, there are some amazing things to do here, so I highly encourage everyone to get out and try them. Did you plan to make it the next time, right? <laughs> so, um, we have been saying for years that uh, the tourism and activities sector uh, will be the, the, right, the next big thing in travel. Are we there yet? Um, are we there yet? Well. Um, I think that one of the most incredible things about this industry that's different to all the other travel industries or, or many of the other ones is that roughly three in every four dollars that goes through this or dollars, euros, pounds, whatever that goes through this industry is still offline. Uh, it, it doesn't even touch the internet in 2023. And we're talking about chat, GPT and robots taking over the world and we haven't even got three out of four people using the internet in tours and experiences yet. So uh, are we there yet? No, uh, I don't think so. We've still got a, a long way to go, but isn't that an incredible opportunity where you've got three quarters of this market yet to come online? I think tours and activities has been the big thing since the 19th century when the first leisure travel start because yeah. traveling for hours in a non-comfortable seat is not the best thing of, of travel. But talking about online booking, I think this is the, the place to be now. Uh, have, you have seen the investment in the last uh, years of booking Airbnb. Uh, so yeah, we are in the, in the best possible market, I think. I'm agree. <laughs> Peter? I mean, I agree as well. I mean, I think this is the absolutely best part of travel, of course, the tourism activity space. Um, what I think is interesting as well is that you can have this feel now that the tourism activity started to play an even broader part in the hospitality. So there were some speakers in the morning who said that it starts with the purpose, it's the experience where you go. So that is really important. Uh, within two weeks, we have um, done a lot of analysis in terms of customer that goes on a sun and beach holiday and don't use an experiences versus those who do. And then you can clearly see that if you go on excursions, you are driving customer satisfactions, which everybody wants, and it also drives loyalty, the MPS score, and also retention. So yes, the market is still incredibly exciting, but also uh, together with the other hospitality sectors, it becomes even more important. Yeah, we are, we are touching uh, some very interesting topics, uh, digitalization and but uh, I will be back on, on this topic later. Um, I separate two blocks in the session from the OTA operator perspective and then the, from the traveler perspective. From the OTA and operator perspective, um, two in three operators reached or exceeded pre-pandemic booking levels in 2022. Is that your case? How optimistic are you for this current year, 2023. And you said two in three operators have exceeded the pre-pandemic levels. I'm actually surprised it's not uh, higher than that in, in total. The, uh, Viator for context is a primarily or a more US focused business and it's US to US destinations and US to European destinations. And our operators are seeing bookings well above uh, 2019 levels on in aggregate. Um, we, last year, we did $2.8 billion of bookings, growing at 105% at the moment was our most recent uh, public release. So we're seeing levels that are two to three times larger uh, than 2019 go to our operators at the moment. Part of that is, like I said, because of the US and a number of other trends related to it, but it's very different demand to what we had before the pandemic and during the pandemic. We mostly had um, near, near haul or short haul travel or drive to travel during the pandemic. And now we're really seeing the re-emergence of the long haul travel in, in, great, in great numbers and, in, and with great strength. And the domestic travel is, is really huge, has been huge in, in this 
past two years, right? Yeah, the, the sheer volume of travel and the conviction behind it, the, the, the advanced booking windows, we're seeing booking windows lengthen, uh, and we're seeing people being more comfortable taking long haul US to Europe or US to Asia, US to rest of world uh, trips. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So the short answer, yeah, in 2022, is the uh, uh, the uh, double of 2019 uh, now this year we are seeing the similar growth so I am really optimistic on the market and it also surprised me that it's not for everyone so yeah, of course <laughs> Peter I, I mean just for context because to amusement is uh, a global operator uh, of products in in over 50 countries and also an OTA so both sides and we are uh, above to 2019 levels already now, so uh, it's going really well. We have introduced our, um, our own product line, the two-week collection, and that is up 25% versus 19. So from an operator perspective, definitely. Um, we're also driving um, uh, traffic now in the direct sales area, uh, into new areas as well, just proving that we can be relevant not only in Sunny Beach, but also in cities. And I am optimistic for the future. Um, because US is strong, Europe is back, Asia is now coming back. Asia is important to us because of our uh, Shorex division, which is really uh, strong in Asia. Uh, and we're also now starting with the, the multi-day tours platform that we have, which is one, one of the slowest sectors to come back. So mm -hmm. uh, optimism with 23, definitely. As uh, Javier Aguilar, the president of Hyatt, said uh, this morning, we are right, reasonably optimistic for this year, right? Reasonably. So, uh, touching the digitalization, um, you were mentioned before, the last focus right and arrival research on the segment found that uh, two different velocities in terms of technology adoption, okay? For example, 70% uh, of operators uh, declare that online bookings are the first technology priority, but in the other hand, larger, um, uh, well, half of them still didn't use a booking system. That's uh, pretty amazing, right? Uh, however, larger company ledgers are focused on advanced technologies, dynamic price, pricing, APIs, and so on. Does size matter in this case? Does size matter? Yeah. So uh, we actually work with over 50,000 uh, tour operators. If you think about the hotel space, you could probably cover like 80% of the market share with 15 companies or maybe even fewer in the US. But in our space, we work with uh, 50,000 operators and we cover still a very small market share overall in comparison to what's out there in the offline space. So there's an enormous amount of fragmentation and this goes right through from, you know, uh, sole traders basically operating tour businesses through to $150 million revenue multinational companies. So the spread of needs that these companies have is very different. Does size matter when it comes to the adoption of technology? Yes and no, I think. Um, there are products out there that solve for both the small operator or the smaller sole trader type of operator and the larger, more complicated, more enterprise level software um, uh, needs of a, of a larger partner. Um, and so I think the challenge is really amongst adoption and seeing that operators do think, can do things differently and showing them the benefits of, of doing things differently. We'd like to think that was a fast process, but inevitably with you know, such a fragmented user base, that takes a lot longer um, than, than you might expect. But again, all of that is upside for the future that we are, um, we are chipping into year in, year out. Maybe it comes uh, by the hand of professionalization of the, of the segment. Yeah, absolutely. And we actually see uh, amongst those operators who adopt online, book or online reservation software um, that their performance on Viator is better. Now, some of that might be their more proactive, forward-thinking operators in the first place, and so there are others. But nevertheless, as a trend, as a, as a general concept, those who adopt software and, and uh, embrace the digitization do do better on our platform. What's your experience in the Spanish and European market, Robert? Mm, size doesn't matter. Uh, maybe even the, the smaller partners uh, adopt the technology faster. faster. Uh, now 50% of our partners are connected through APIs. 
-hmm. um, this 50% is about 65% of the sales, but we are not pushing the, uh, the partners to adopt any technology. It's up to them. Okay, and in your case? Uh, no, I mean, we, we do the same, and I just would like to double down what you're saying. The, the connectivity is incredibly important, both from an efficiency, from an operator perspective, but also in terms of the customer features that you get from it. You get the instant availability, you get the, um, the, the booking management that you can do amendments in, in a lot quicker time. So that's why it is so important to get on the connectivity part. Um, and we are working with suppliers uh, that both are connected, um, but the ones that we do ourselves, we also connect them in our system. So it is, it is incredibly important to have that one. I think it's a good point that it's, it really benefits the end user, the traveler as well, to have a operator that's connected. Um, things like last minute availability are Correct. really hard to do unless you're either connected through an API or through a res tech system. And, it's been a very clear traveler trend towards more last minute bookings, uh, four hours from departure, one hour from departure, even 15 minutes from departure, sort of instant um, confirmation, yeah. And I think there's upside. I mean, I'm coming from the, um, the tour operator side, hotels and flight side. Um, yeah. The amount of dynamic pricing and trading you do in that space because of the bigger basket size, I think there are a lot of things we can do in this space as well um, going forward to really optimize the, the earnings for the operator side. Right. Yeah. In our case, we have a small partners that only work with us, so they don't really need a system to connect to more people. They use directly our system, so we have last minute availability without any connectivity. Actually, uh, the, the booking windows and the research, I, I'm reading the exact figures, uh, says roughly 30% of travelers booking uh, the book in the same day and 75% within the one week in advance to a arrival date. How can we increase this booking window? Because suppliers is, is the holy grail for suppliers. I mean, yeah, so. <laughs> um, uh, this is something we all need to, right? Right, right. I find it incredible that, like, this speaks to one of the biggest challenges in this industry, basically. You have one in three people want to book on the same day as the tour is actually taking place. And the challenges that are involved in that for a small business is, are, are pretty great. Um, and uh, so one solution is to sort of lengthen the average time or, or, or encourage travelers to book more in advance. That kind of goes against the prevailing traveler um, trend, which is out there, which is a closer, more instant uh, booking. Um, the other option is uh, amongst those operators who embrace like really obsessing about what the traveler wants, amongst those operators, probably they will lead uh, the future of the operator community towards something that is like more instant and maybe even a shorter booking window. So there is this tension between what would make sense, what is easy for operators and what travelers want, where we're sort of playing in the middle and, and trying to balance those two sides. Yeah, and how do you work in, in true amusement? Uh, because I'm presumed that, uh, I'm assuming that uh, you have a larger booking window. So we, we basically have a plan for every single booking window. Um, and because we have access to the customers, to the two-week customers in this case, yeah. uh, we can clearly see that we're driving uptake um, a lot higher than any other client because we have that access. You can, you can basically target with specific personalized offers based on the insights that we have. So clearly that is absolutely the most efficient one. But I think in the end, again, like, like other parts of the, of the hospitality sector have been moving. I mean, it, it wasn't that long ago that we have walkings to hotels that you don't have anymore. And the hotel industry basically incentivized the, the customers with discounts or gave specific benefits. Like in our case, that would be skip the line or, or cancellation free or something like that. So I think there are ways that you can increase that. Even though to Ben's point, the, the, the customer trend is actually shorter, but we need to make sure our customers uh, are really aware of this scarcity, especially on the, on the hot spot, so they secure their time, and that's why it's important, and the benefits with early bookings. And that I think we can drive as an industry. Yeah. Maybe partnerships is a really good strategy to move the, fun, the, the uh, consumer up the funnel. Yeah, I mean, we, we already today are using some of the two tour operators 
when they market certain destinations, they do it from the angle of the experiences and that drives the early booking behavior. I think that there's also like things that we can help with for an operator to uh, facilitate last minute bookings, like, yeah. like to do um, flash sales or price discounting or, or price advice or these kind of things. Um, that would really make it easier for them to shift inventory at the last minute, solving one of the problems of, of yeah. late avail of um, uh, how is, short booking windows. How is it working with the, uh, the partnership with Uber? How's it working? Okay, so um, yeah, last year we announced a partnership with Uber. Um, the bigger picture here is that Viator actually powers a great number of um, travel and publishing sites where you know if you if you do something that's not related to experiences but you want to monetize demand on experiences we can help you with that and share the economics so um, we announced a partnership with uber uh, it's live and uh, we're pleased with progress um, and more generally we're always looking for ways to maximize the amount of demand that we're able to put in front of our, our operators and uber is a really good example of how uh, we're doing that mm -hmm. Great. Um, search engine from, let's uh, move on uh, the traveler's perspective. Um, search engines and Google Maps are the most popular uh, online channels for research and experience. Other popular methods include uh, social media, Facebook, Instagram ahead, of course, traveler uh, review sites and OTAs. What's it, uh, uh, what is your approach in these first stages of inspiration and planning? I think it's a mix of everything. I think you need to participate in all of these media channels. And I think um, experiences particularly are, are extremely visual products. So we are benefit, benefiting on this one. But it basically comes down to a data-led approach. So where do you have the, um, the biggest uptake and which channel do you do? And, and, and there you push it. Uh, I mean, we are there with, with everybody else in terms of, of um, uh, the younger generation with TikTok or we are in, in social media for influ influencers. So we're basically hedging our bets in this case. Hmm. Yeah. We create the content by ourselves. I started the company writing travel guides. So in the last 15 years, my travel guides have been the most read travel guides in Spain. In Spain. We have Paris.ts, Londres.ts, so the content is inside the core business of the company and all the tours in Civitatis that are 80,000 tours are created in-house. So we have a big content department, so we are uh, travel inspired per se. In fact, there are a lot of people that visit Civitatis to, to know what to see and what to do in a city, even if they prefer to do it by their own, but we are uh -huh. inspired. So, uh, mentioning Instagram and inspiration TikTok, there's a lot of cases uh, when everyone knows uh, Amsterdam, massification, maybe here in Barcelona. How can we stop crowding certain successful activities only to cater more specific interest and we can drive maybe uh, another kind of point of interest? Or... Um, well, maybe to follow up on your point about channels, um, I, I think of this, this channel space with Google, at the, and you're right that you know, all the companies in this space uh, are you know, in Google and are, 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 you know, using that channel and others that you mentioned too. Um, but we think of it kind of like a football team or a soccer team where I now live, but nevertheless, uh, a football team where if you uh, look at who scores goals in a football team, it's always the strikers. So you might be tempted to conclude, well, I'll just field a pitch full of strikers. Um, of course, that would, uh, we all know uh, that that would probably not work very well. Um, you need like all the different roles on the team that facilitate that goal scoring. You have midfielders that set up strikers and def defenders that stop your opponent scoring. So, you know, instead of just focusing on the uh, parts of your marketing strategy that score the goal, like the Google, which is very high intent traffic, think about the, the, the whole marketing uh, strategy, particularly when, you know, people are actually only in the mood for booking experiences a couple of weeks a year, probably when they've booked travel or very shortly around when they're traveling. So think about the whole year and how people um, 
uh, or that's how uh, what we try to do to think about the whole year where people are in the dreaming and ins inspiration mindset when it comes to sort of spreading the load across uh, different t uh, tours and activities of course there are things that are famous and they will always be famous but we're also in the business of discovery we're also in the business of finding new things to do and, and bringing those onto onto Viator and onto TripAdvisor which has got an incredible database broad database of things to do that you you, you know you, you wouldn't necessarily discover on um, on other sites so um, we're already at 300,000 products and part of the idea of that is to provide fresh new things that uh, just haven't haven't existed or haven't uh, been been broadly on the market before so great variety there uh, to choose from that helps spread the load Alberto, Peter. In terms of your other question <laughs> No, in terms of you asked about sorry. Can you repeat the question again? Yeah, the, the problem of massification of uh, the sorry, mass yeah. in the mass in activities in in Barcelona or whatever I think it's a good question I think we, we, uh, we will always have people who want to see the must-seen locations. Um, but what we can do, both from an operator perspective, I mean, if you take the Sagrada Familia, we, we do specific tours with smaller group. You go there early morning or late evening, uh, and you make sure that you go there where you don't have the same crowd. So that's one way of doing it. I think coming back to the other question we had before, I think dynamic pricing have, have basically sorted out the, the, the peak issues in other areas. This is something that we as an industry definitely should look into as well, because that will naturally spread it out. And then do our utmost also to, to market other parts of this, take Barcelona for an example, and that's how you, you basically spread it out. I still truly believe in, in that, that uh, tourism is a force for good. We're doing a, um, a lot of things in, in Two Care Foundation. We have introduced it in Cape Verde, for example, where you really can see the impact that we're making. Yeah, totally. I'm, um, I'm just watching the... Oh, we are running out of time, and this, is, this will be the, the only session that we haven't talked about ChatGPT, and it's not possible. How can ChatGPT and AI um, affect the segment? What can we do? for our business? No, I, 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 I am as excited as everybody else who have been on this stage today in these things. And I think from a tourism activity space, there are basically three things that at least we are looking into. So one is the product setup. Again, the number of products that we have uh, with all the different variation and fragmentation in all the different languages is complex. So this is something that will definitely help with. I think, I think in terms of, of finding the right product is super important. I think this will be also exciting to see. It's been, I've been in the business since 95, and this has always been one of the holy grails. Can you actually nail down the right product, um, which, is, which is super important. And then the customer service, uh, 12 million customers. We have one call center. What can you do to make that whole transformation easier? I think these are at least three use cases that are very applicable from ChatGPT. I think maybe a fourth one is internal efficiency as yeah. well, helping our staff uh, be more, get more done, be more efficient. The call center is a great example of that for, for us where, you know, say somebody has called in three or four times or, or a more complicated case, it might be 10 times, um, and allowing an agent to see a very quick summarized version of what's happen to that user has never really been possible before um, and AI can do that very well so things like that internal efficiencies allow us to help with customer service great and uh, for last one last question uh, about rich uh, rich tea has been uh, acquired today the, the news of the day in the Q&A sector for uh, 120 million dollars maybe the Australian uh, OTA are we gonna see more movements like this one in the short term? Um, uh, yeah, so ResD, one of the software platforms, it was announced today. It was acquired by an, un, uh, by an undisclosed... Uh, um, Private equity firm. Yeah, and um, are we going to see more of them? Uh, perhaps, yeah. I, we'll see what the strategy behind this is, uh, this particular acquisition over the fullness of time, but perhaps, yeah, it's a fragmented industry and the story is yet to be written. For your part, Ben, uh, Alberto, uh, Peter, thank you very much. It has mm -hmm. been a huge pleasure to have all of you here.
Thank you. Thanks Thank for you. having me.